Um, but I think I probably less what I've learned or what I or more what I'm learning from others. I think um, I would say that the most important thing at this moment in time is empathy and understanding and um, compromise uh, and all those things that maybe some leaders are not necessarily good at all the time because they try to be dynamic and they try to get things done and sometimes you overlook some of those things as you're um, you know trying to push for the best deal or push for the you know the uh, the best outcome but I think because things are so uncertain and people are very concerned and they are um, working in in most cases very unusual circumstances I think all of those things are um, are probably the most important and you know that's what I've picked up from others uh, and hopefully I've adopted some of those in into what how I've approached sort of management and leadership um in the, in the, in the time that we've you know been facing this crisis um i think that um it will be good to carry some of those things through in the future when the when whatever the new normal is but no one knows what the new normal is going to be at the moment or when it's going to be um but at the same time i think it's also important and obviously one of the big challenges is is keeping your business on the on the on the road so to speak um uh, i mean everybody has seen a drop off in in revenues everybody has seen uh you know everyone is thinking about you know what the size of the business might have to look like um hopefully in our business that's not going to be too dramatic but obviously in a lot of other businesses it is going to be very dramatic um but also I think, I think it's also look, thinking about opportunities as well. Uh, fortunately, we work for a business that um, has a pretty strong balance sheet. We, we are clearly going to be affected by it and there could be some very dramatic changes within our business and our industry uh, on the sports media side as a consequence of all of this. But there are also potentially opportunities out there. So I think you've also got to try to anticipate those as well. So I think, yes, yeah, so I think it's a mixture of empathy, consideration, anticipation, um, all of those, all of those sort of things wrapped into, and compromise, all of those sort of things wrapped into one. So, you know, if you're trying to anticipate something, if you spot a good deal, you're obviously trying to get the best deal, maybe compromise is not necessarily what, how you might approach that deal because you're still trying to get the best deal. And, you know, you might take a view that assets can become distressed in this time and therefore you can get them a lot cheaper. Um, so all of those different elements, I think it would, it would have to be, it would have to depend on what particular management or leadership challenge was in front of me at that time to say how I would react now differently to how I reacted before. <laughs>it's a little bit unclear at the moment how everyone is going to respond because I think they're dealing with the here and now and trying to work out when sport is going to start again um, I think again one of the things one of the words that we mentioned about management and leadership approach I think has to apply to how sport is approaching the challenges which is compromise I mean it's very clear to me that everybody's going to have to take in if you look at the sports ecosystem you know the deals that are done the deals that are the events that have been postponed or cancelled the sponsorship and media rights are not going to be activated as a consequence of that the compensation or otherwise that may or may not have to follow as a consequence of that i think everyone has to accept that these are literally unprecedented times and that while whilst everyone will try to get the best deal for themselves they'll have to be compromised everyone is going to have to take a little bit of pain I think along the way in order for the best solution in an imperfect world I mean whatever the solution to example for example that obviously the big thing is European football season right or the when does the major league baseball start or when do the NBA playoffs take place whatever the solution is it's not going to be 
the best solution for everybody. It's probably just going to be the best solution of a of a group of not very good solutions, which means that everybody's going to have to take a, a bit of pain along the way and everyone's going to have to compromise and everyone's going to have to accept that they won't get the deal out of it that they would normally try to get out of it. So if the league is seeking compensation or a rights holder or a broadcaster or a media company is seeking a, a, a discount on rights fees, they're going to have to appreciate the other side of the other side of the fence. And likewise, a rights holder is going to have to appreciate that the media company hasn't got the events that they paid for. And therefore, the compens they're going to have to get some sort of compensation. But everyone's got to carry on working together. So there's no point in bankrupting a, a league or bankrupting a, a media company just so you can come out of it and say, well, we got, you know, we didn't back down or we got the best deal. That's not going to help anybody. It's like, it, it, this is where I think this is the biggest test is for the actual relationships that have been built up through the, these deals is to see how much of these things are partnerships and how much, are, how much are they truly transactional only. So who regards it as a transaction and who regards it as a true partnership? Because if you regard it as a true partnership, you're going to have to accept that we want to keep everybody, every, everybody still in business in the ecosystem. We don't want to put anyone out of business in the ecosystem because that's not going to be any good for anybody. So I think that's the biggest challenge and whether a series of very, very competitive organizations and people who are basically always looking to get one over on each other on a regular basis can actually get around the table and accept that. I, know this, I don't know the answer. I mean, like I said, I think the answers are going to be the the least worst of a load of not very good solutions. You know, the sport will come back. I, I think I'd like to say bigger and better. It will certainly come back different, but the pent up demand for sport, I think is probably a common theme that you're going to get from everybody. And that it's still a great industry, regardless of there's clearly going to be, you know, uh, uh, some organizations and some people that don't make make it into the next phase of sport in the post coronavirus world um and i don't mean that from a illness perspective i meant you know sort of i mean that from a uh you know from a purely from a business perspective i mean there's going to be people laid off and there's going to be companies that don't make it um and hopefully there'll be nobody in from the sports world from a illness perspective at all clearly but i mean that's sort of inevitable as well there will probably there's inev inevitably going to be you know uh people colleagues that we've worked with who contract it or people that you know, you know it's going to be sadly very missed uh at the end of it um but it's you know that's going to be no different to any other industry um and i would you know i would think i would say anyone I think there will be opportunity. I think content will be different in some respects. I think how people interact and engage with people will be different. You know, there's the big debate about whether this is the this is the breakthrough time for esports, for example. I think that debate will go rage on for a, a long, you know, a little while yet. Um, how do people consume their sport? Uh, there'll probably be a there'll probably be a boom maybe for a short period of time in nostalgia because obviously that's what a lot of content people are consuming at the moment and there'll there'll probably be a lot of younger people who won't realise that their football team you know ever watched their football team from the seventies or eighties because they just weren't alive then uh, so that might there might be a boom in nostalgia there might be a boom in uh, um, the older generation of players and people uh more respect maybe for that that generation um i think there can be yeah, all sorts of things you know what's the future of sports betting for example what's the future of betting on the high street i imagine betting on the high you know in the uk and australia could be seriously you know challenged and we may not have you know betting shops on the high street anymore i think that's a potential outcome 
of all of this. I think that was an ex a trend that was happening anyway, but that could get accelerated by it. Uh, you know, whether you're still getting your sports coverage in a printed newspaper or whether you're getting it only on a digital platform. Uh, I think that's a potential, that's a potential challenge as well. Um, so there are lots of opportunities, I think, still, but there'll be big changes as well. Well, I think if you're in England, I don't know how far, how far around this is getting, but I mean, it's, it, it'll apply to people in the US as well, but I think certainly in Italy and Spain, I mean, the inspiration is obviously all the medical workers and staff. So in the UK, it's the NHS. In America, it's slightly different. And the setup is Italy and Spain will be slightly different. But I think seeing them is sort of inspirational. I think they're the sort of heroes, obviously, of the current situation and will continue to be. Um, some of the politicians, hopefully, will rise to the challenge and, you know, will be proven to be very great leaders. and some will be shown to be not great leaders. Um, but I think it's the people on the front line who are the, who are the inspiration. I mean, in terms of amusing, I mean, there's so many amusing things going around. I, I haven't seen, I mean, there's obviously a lot of great sports sort of tricks and memes and, you know, Gareth Bale chipping a, you know, whatever it was into a dustbin and uh, Steph Curry doing stuff in America, Steph Curry's son doing gym in his front room. I mean, there's lots of music. Although I have to say the funniest, the funniest one I've seen, which has got nothing to do with sport, and somebody said it was a bit cruel, was the girl, little girl who got told that there was no more takeaways. I don't know if you've seen that one. It's hilarious. It's, it's very, very funny. And then there's, the other, then there's the other one about the guy who's asked, saying he's got to go into you know, self-isolation. You know, self and he says, you've got a choice, A or B. Do you want to, A, be with your wife and children, or B? And he goes, B, B, definitely B, even before he's heard it. <laughs> that was very funny as well. The first time you see that one, still makes me laugh, actually, now. Uh, there's things like that, you know, people can be very funny in adversity.